just when you thought the vipering was done. Uh, is vipering a word, by the way? It's not. Just kidding. What's going on, guys? Do Wink here, and welcome to another Viper video on the channel. I'm, I should I should make a playlist of all the different decks that we have with Rottenmouth Viper because I, I feel like it's just endless at this point. Um, but, you know, due to my unhealthy obsession with the card Rottenmouth Viper, uh, we got to jam it in some more shells. Before we continue, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content, and let me know in th let me know in the comments section down below uh, what you uh, what you thought about the video. So Rottenmouth Viper is uh, good with game objects, and it just so turns out that one of the better ways of generating a large number of game objects relatively quickly involves food. And there are some good food support from the recent set, and we've had a lot of food support over, you know, the past couple of sets, Wilds of Eldraine and, and things like that. So we have some uh, we have some stuff to cook with. Now, the the soul of this deck, or the the heart of this deck, as it were, is it is sort of like okay. So for those of you who don't know, there is a combo with Yigra Eater of All, which has kind of been picking up a little bit of steam in the queues and challenges uh, in Pioneer where if you have Yigra in play and two copies of Cauldron Familiar, because the familiars are food, you can sacrifice one cat to the other and then get it back, sack one to the other, and that's just an infinite loop. So we're kind of utilizing that combo in a slightly different shell that generates more game objects. So you have stuff like Tough Cookie, ETB Make a Food, Vine Reap Mentor, ETB Make a Food, Trail of Crumbs, ETB Make a Food, same with Gilded Goose. So you have a lot of ways to generate multiple permanents. And multiple permanents, as you probably already know, good with Rotten Mouth Viper. So that's kind of the core and the genesis of the deck. You know, there's some fatal pushes, couple thought seizes, but really, like at its at its soul, it is more of a food deck than anything else for sure. So plenty of ways to generate food. Uh, we have, again, like I said, the interaction, the Fatal Pushes, Thoughtseize, a couple of Feed the Cycles as well. I've been a pretty big fan of this card because, you know, what's cool is if you have something like Trail of Crumbs in play, you can go Feed the Cycle, Sacrifice a Food, that can trigger Trail of Crumbs. And what I really like about Trail of Crumbs specifically is it finds you your payoff cards, right? You have a lot of sort of, you know, dirtily, I guess, fidgety do-nothing cards in the in, in the early game. And Trail really helps you find your payoffs like Ygra and Rottenmouth Viper. There is one copy of Camellia because you sacrifice so many foods. You can make squirrels and put counters on squirrels. That's pretty much it for the main deck. As far as the lands are concerned, nothing too crazy. There's like a Baseju, a couple of Hive of the Eye Tyrants, and a Takanuba, but mostly just business as usual when it comes to the mana base. And sort of the same thing with the sideboard. You got, you know, Blot Out for Vampires, Night of Dusk Shadow for Amalia, additional copies of Thoughtseize, a Trail of Crumbs, two Pick Your Poison for Vampires, a Frasca, two Unlicensed Turrets for Phoenix, two Dampic Sphere for Lotus, and our trusty elk companion, Never Leave Home Without Gigantha. So for this video, this is going to be another one of those showcase videos because I did not play, you know, full stop. I didn't, I didn't end up playing a full league with this. I think I played two matches and then just kind of had the dip and haven't tried it again since, but... I've been trying to do just a video of the full five matches, but I think it's kind of nice to have a little bit of like the shorter form stuff kind of interspersed because, you know, not everybody can sit down for an hour and a half long league. And uh, I hope you enjoy the games and I will see you back here in just a little bit for the first round. Would love to play first. See, when we're not playing the farmer, we get to play Gigantha. Everybody in chat's happy that we're playing Gigantha now, right? I mean, you're probably more happy that we cut the farmer, but the latest short videos. Thank you, Kerchak. I appreciate the uh, thank you for the kind words. I know the editor has been trying some more short, some more short style content. So I'm glad that uh, I'm glad I'm glad to hear some good feedback about that. Because the thing about shorts is they they barely make any money whatsoever, but I think they're really good for the growth of the channel because they like they it's it's much easier to digest content. And I think more people are like more likely to watch shorts, especially people who like haven't seen your content before. Not sure how good this matchup is. Elvish Mystique. 
Okay, we drew a trail, which is nice, because the trail can do a little bit of cooking with the goose. So I think what we're probably going to do this turn is trail, goose, sack, food, pay, try to hit a land. So I really don't want to miss my land drop. We got a reader. We have located an opponent who reads cards. I don't read. Couldn't be me. All right. I mean, something, right? Pirate software who blew up using them actually strongly recommends changing the settings on them to only show to non-subscribers since they're mostly for discoverability, so it's wasted on stuff. Interesting, Blue Krieger. I didn't know you could do that. I I will uh, write that down. That's very, very good information. Thank you for that. Besaju for Nykthos. I just, I mean, if I take Besaju, then I'm just not, I'm missing my land drop there, which is pretty bad. I don't think I can afford to do that. I think my plan this game is to just try to get to the Yigra combo. That's tough. No, it's not really tough, right? I just need to push damage. This looks like a really weird play, but I think I just have to push damage here. I don't know if this is good, but... Let me go combat. Hit for four. They go to 12. Play oven. Sack cat, sack food. Bring back cat. Trigger trail. Hope to hit a land. Okay, I mean, I guess the Viper is good for next turn. They're 11. Yeah, it's going to be pretty hard to kill them before they start going off. I mean, maybe their hand just has, like, no gas. They could have no storms or something. If their hand's, like, I don't know, just all fucking trolls and calves, maybe. But Cav can dig them into the storm. Viper and Black-White Affinity has been really good. Do you have a list? L-I-M-K? I'm assuming you're talking about Pioneer, right? All right, list me, because we were we we were looking at Black White uh, Viper earlier, and I was like, I kept running into a wall. Okay, that's fine. Like I have the core down of Viper, Eight Inspectors, and Warden, but that's like I couldn't figure out the deck from there. I think I'm supposed to tough cookie just to get a trigger off of trail, right? I have six. Because now I can sack. One, two, three, four, five. And then I get a food off of this, tap one mana and pay two for two trail triggers. I think that makes sense to me. It's a little weird, but like my sh my shit can't attack into the troll anyways, right? Take that. Take. I don't need the hive because I have plenty of stuff to do with my mana. And I think I would rather just do it this way so I can trigger the trail again this turn. Because now I can play Swamp, get back the cat, end step, trigger the trail. I just really want to find... Oh, wait, I've already played a land this turn. That was my bad. Well, I mean, even still, like, having the having this for next turn is probably better than the Hive next turn. Oh, I'm stupid. Card, Season, Warren Guard. Any token. So it does trigger off the roll token, which is kind of cool. I doubt it, Thasgar. There's the um, the gift a card naturalize four four three mana four four. If you gift a card, they get to they draw a card, but you naturalize something. I think that card's good, but not much else. It's good. 
we don't have the ability to put the second cat into play, though, right? Hmm. Is there any way that I can get a mana somehow? Not seeing it. I mean, the good news is they have no cards in hand, so I think we're fine. If only I could attack myself with the Viper. When she says quatre, do you hear the R in it? Well, when I'm reading the word, I would I would pronounce the R in it, but I don't know if that's correct. Quatre? 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 Is that even a real word? Can somebody confirm or deny if that is a real word? Wait, hold on. I'm now realizing this. How am I going to sacrifice? Oh, I can sacrifice the cat to the Yigra. Okay, so I should play this, right? I can just pay two, sack the cat, play this, then yeah, okay, okay. It's four. Right, but how do you how do you pronounce the word is what I'm saying. No, that's that's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. Liar, 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 liar. No, no, that's not how you say it. Incorrect. Incorrect. We need Gab in the stream. Okay. They only have five floating, though, so as long as they don't... Okay, they didn't hit Nick, those. I was almost going to say it, and then as soon as I realized it, I was like, well, if I say the word Nykthos, it will appear. So I will rather not say the word. All right, opponent... I would like to uh, go to the second game, please. The word does not have enough freedom in it, I agree. I mean, I guess I'll pay. I guess I'll pay. I guess I'm, I'm just showing them more of my deck, right? What's the point of this? There's no reason to show them more of my deck. Do, 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 do. I have demonstrated an infinite loop. Yeah, their draw was not very good, to be fair. All right, game two, mono green, huh? So, Hearst, not good. Sphere meat? Uh, you like how I just put this random Vraska in my sideboard? Thought sees me. I don't think I want the blot out. Uh, I can probably trim at least one, maybe two of these. Right, that's kind of what I'm thinking, is like, push has no good targets besides the eight elves. Now, on the draw, like, not having push for elf is rough, but if you, like, the problem I have with fatal push against them is the draws where you have push and they don't have elf, you effectively mulliganed, right? But then I guess the other, like, you could argue the other side of the coin where it's like, well, what if they have elf and you don't have push? I'm just going to do, like, we'll try this. We'll We'll trim fatal push. No, you're right, you're right, because... You have to, like, you're activating the ability, right? So sacrificing is part of the activated ability. So the activated ability goes on the stack. Then triggered abilities always go on the stack on top of the activated abilities, which means that the bottom of the stack is always going to be the Cauldron Familiar, and therefore it never actually comes back into play before the Vein Ripper resolves, is how I understand it. I think I got to push. 
My hand's really good. Because you always have to pay costs before triggers happen. And therefore, what ends up happening is that you need to... Um, like, you need to resolve all triggers that happen as part of paying the cost before the ability resolves. I think I'm just going to play Mentor here. What am I doing this turn? It's probably Thoughtseize Cookie, right? And then I can go Sphere, Viper Sphere next turn. I mean, we know they don't have Nykthos in hand because we know they've been, they've been missing land drops. Uh, I don't love this hand. Mm. I think you have to take the troll here. It doesn't feel super great, but... The troll is just the best thing against the viper, and I think my plan has to be just shove all in on this viper here. So presumably they're probably just casting Kiori this turn, maybe? Would be my guess. Yeah, Kiora pass. And I guess they could use the picker poison to kill one of my food tokens, but. Okay. So now we get to slam Kiora for five. I'm definitely attacking Kiora this game. And they played Forest last turn. Uh oh, they drew Lair, so we know they're three cards, right? Well, they can pick your boars in the sphere if I sack everything to Viper, right? So I know that I could have killed the Kiora this turn, but I, I think it's more important to play the Viper. I'm just going to do this. I want to keep the pressure because I, I really want to kill this Kiora next turn. You get a food. No, I know, but like I'd rather just have a 3-2. Like the more stuff I have in play, the faster they die. It's a good use for the pick your poison. That trailblazer. Well, this is also an artifact. So even if they still had pick your poison, I could just sack this. Well, they did find Nykthos. Now, they only have three mana here, so the Nykthos is not that bad for me this turn. They just have floating mana. Okay. Oh man, casting that Yigra is kind of tempting. I'm not going to, but it is tempting for sure. Okay, let's send the small idiots at Kiora and the big idiot at them. Because I want to make sure Kiora dies. Oh, sure, they can just sack the invasions. I didn't think about that. Kind of forgot they could do that. It's going to say, you sure about that? You sure about that one, Chief? So they're at 11. And now we go here, pick up Jeffrey from school. Everybody say, hi, Jeff. Hello, Jeffrey. Nice of you to show up. Wait, uh, why did they play Kiora? Weren't they supposed to just cast Cav this turn? <laughs> I mean, even if they didn't, even if, like, the Dampic Sphere wasn't in play, they still couldn't Kiora into Cav. Maybe they just, like, miscounted their mana. I think we ignore Kiora now, by the way, because it's at six loyalty. I'd rather just attack them. All right, well, I mean, that also works, I guess. 
Unclear. I will uh, keep my hand. Oh, I still do too. Our opponent has revealed a Yorion the Sky Nomad. Sky Nomad Enjoyer. Oh, they're playing the Scape Shift deck. Okay, got it. I was confused for a second. Scape Shift deck makes sense. Yeah, Spelunking, Scape Shift, all that stuff. Which, to be fair, probably is not a great matchup for us. I think you gotta go Cat Oven here. Although maybe it's better to play the Mentor. It's like potentially slightly more pressure if we play the Mentor, because we deal three next turn. But we can also deal three this turn anyways. Cool, but I... Whose snake is better is the question. Well, I mean, if I draw my snake, then we can cook. Uh, okay, that helps. So we very likely need to play towards get setting up the combo, which means I think what I want to do is just Trail of Crumbs pass. And they're obviously never blocking, right? Free one point of damage. So if we can find a cat next turn... That would be the best possible. Because if we can find Cat next turn, we can put it into play before we play the uh, the Yigra. So we just need to find another Cat. All right, Cat me. It's not a Cat. Go here. And then here... Let's do this. This. What happens to modern? I mean, there's a new set coming. There's a new set out. And I believe that the cards in the new set are not going to say actual 0%, but basically 0% to affect modern. Uh, and I think that there's much more possibility and potential for the cards in Pioneer. That's kind of what we're exploring here. It's all about trying new stuff. Yeah, that was the plan. I think this turn is... I'm just going to spend this turn trying to find the other cat. Uh, here... I mean... That's kind of interesting, too. Now we got to think about this. We did miss a land drop. I'm trying to think if I'm more likely to win the game with Viper or just finding second cat. I think I'm most likely I'm, I think I'm more likely to win the game with second cat because like what happens if we Viper? They discard a spell because we know they don't have a land in hand. I discard a spell. That's close. It's really close. <clears throat> I guess what we can do is we can go through one more cat loop, and if we don't find the cat, then maybe we can decide to go for something else. Okay, we need land five for the uh, the thing. So now, what if I sacrifice everything but one oven? And just say, fuck the Trail of Crumbs. That crazy? What's my alternative? Alternative is just play a 3-2 and pass. Could also play Tough Cookie. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go for the Viper. I don't actually think they have a ton of ways to kill the Viper. Yeah, let's do this. We're gonna, we're gonna see if this works. I don't know, but we'll try it. 
Like, their deck probably doesn't have a lot of removal spells, right? I think this deck should be running Viper or Yigra, not both. Well, the concept, like, the idea behind playing both is that you just have more, like, not going to say more win conditions, but, like, more action, you know? Like, you have draws that involve Viper, but then when you don't draw Viper, Yigra's pretty good, so on. Like, it just gives you a, like, you know, makes your deck more two-dimensional and more angles of attack. Don't they run Binding? I don't think the Scapeshift deck plays Binding. They're not playing... They're they're playing a weird deck. I don't know what removal spells the, the Scapeshift deck has, but I, I don't... I don't know if they have Binding. Maybe they do. It's been pretty good so far, Slim Green Bean. Do they have a 4 damage spell? I call. It's an easy call for me. It's gonna be a... That's, that's an easy call. You have to call there. No, they're definitely playing the Spelunking deck. Can confirm now. With 100% certainty, Spelunking is on the table. <laughs> Stoke the Flames, can you imagine? There's no shot. There's ain't no way I'm getting Stoke the Flames here. No chance that's going to happen. That's a Lotus Field. It's a lot of mana. We're not dead, are we? Surely I'm not dead this turn. Par. Uh, have they played a land this turn? Okay. Well, the answer is it didn't matter. But Sage One Spelunking has to be really good. Let's go to combat first. It's the easy part. Discard, discard, huh? Chump with Cobra, maybe not. Thinking about chumping. Maybe that, I think they're thinking about, like, worry, worried about dying to Cauldron Familiar, potentially. Slaughter Priest of Mogus with uh, Viper. Kind of interesting. So I'm definitely not tapping out this turn. And I think that means I should just play Mentor and pass. Because I need to hold up Besager for Spelunking. I don't think I do it main phase. I think I wait until they cast the Scape Shift. Bring to light for three. What are they getting for three? Tip alt, maybe? But three can't get Scape Shift. Get a. They can't get second Spelunking, right? They're getting Pillage the Bog. Uh, okay. <laughs> pillage for two. Bring to light for Pillage the Bog. That's not, not something I thought I would see. Okay, that's a problem. That is problematic. So they have four mana. They still can't... Oh, no, they have five, right? And even if I besage you this, it doesn't matter because they get a basic and it's still five mana. It's actually more mana. I'm just going to wait until they put the scape shift on the stack and then I'll kill this. Do they have another bring to light? No, you're hard casting Valky, Okay. What's the plan now, Chief? What is the plan now? Well, I mean, the idea is you pillage first to find the combo pieces, and then you can go for it. And I don't think they have that many Lotus Fields. So, the pillage makes sense, because they just needed to find their combo pieces. Uh, that doesn't matter, right? Because they have no mana. Yeah, usually you don't play the Lotus Field before the turn you're going off. Let's go here. Let's go here. Here. So they're at two. All right. Okay, so Thought Sees Me. I think I might cut the trails. 
Would you bring in Damping Sphere against them? It does stop them from casting Splendid Wreck over and over again, right? Like, it, in theory, stops the combo. It's possible, Ryo. Yeah, it's possible. Oh, Lotus Field too, right? Yeah, that's a good point. It does stop Lotus Field. So it's probably worth it. How many pushes do I want to keep in? They have Nissa and Cobra. Maybe, like, four total removal spells. Three push, one feed. Let's try that. I've located the lands. The lands have been located. This one's good. Keep this. Lands secured. I, I got enough lands for the next game, too. I'll save them for uh, for game three. That's a nice draw. So you probably go just goose on one. And then probably Thoughtseize oven on two. Maybe I don't even Thoughtseize them. Maybe I just cookie on two. Because cookie sets me up better for the Viper. We'll see if we draw land this turn. So if I Thoughtseize oven... Then I have one, two, three, four, five. Next turn, land is six, but I have to sack everything. As opposed to cookie this turn lets me sack less stuff. Okay, I'm going to do that. That's a little risky. I, I, you know what? I guess I could also fade Thoughtseize, right? Sack food, Thoughtseize, then I have three, four, five, six next turn, and then just keep the oven in hand. Now let's do that. Bring to light Elish Norn Spelunking World Souls Rage. Uh, I'm just going to take this. Because now they don't really have a good play next turn. And that was their draw step. So yeah, now we just go attack, slam Viper. Nice Fatal Push. Viper! One, two, three. I'm curious to see if they even have Leyline Binding. We haven't seen it yet. Oh, they have Mommy. Hi, Mom. Hello, Mommy. Alright, planes. I, I hate these lands, by the way. Okay, Rage, rage for two. I guess their plan is just BTL for Valky and kill the Rodmouth Viper, right? Hmm. Kind of forgot they could do that. Was I supposed to take the Bring the Light the turn that I thought seized? Maybe. Yeah, because now we're kind of cooked. You can play the Oven to sack the Viper too, so it's... It's like not the worst, but it does still kind of suck. There's nine. Jeffrey Hefe. Hefe coming in. How do we sack the cat continuously? With Yigda, eater of all. Big cat. The biggest of cats. <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. I'll fucking, I'll fucking do it again. If you insist. I'll just do it again. It is nice that when you sack Viper to oven, it gives you two food for the next one. That is kind of hot. Is vehicle still dead? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's just that that deck is so bad against Into Amalia. We can Pip. Yeah, Pip kills the oven. And they, we know they have Elishnorn in hand. They hit Pip and a land. Yeah, I mean, I'm not second my Viper. Zero chance I'm second Viper. Although, I guess now it's awkward. They can block with Elishnorn. And then just tip alt it next turn. Kind of wish this fatal push was literally anything else.
No, they just discarded their last card, which I think makes sense. But like, they get to Rottenmouth Viper with an Elish Thorn in play. <laughs> How the fuck do we beat that? <laughs> Man, Viper sounds good in their deck. They should play Viper. Uh... Don't need this. And this doubles up, right? So this goes two. Yeah, that's gross. All right, game three, game three, game three, game three. It makes me kind of want to try, like, it makes me kind of want to try Elishnorn in a Viper deck. But it is a little tough to, like, actually get to cast Elishnorn. Try this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that seems like a very, you know, a very weird circumstance that would probably never, ever materialize in a normal game of Magic. But that one specifically, it was good in. I mean, the thing is, you kind of need to ramp out Elishnorn, right? I don't know if I should keep this hand, but it's a really fast cat. Problem is, we have no Cauldron Familiars. And I am only playing three copies, which is probably a mistake. We should be playing four. Cobra, BTL, Valky. Well, now we don't have to worry about them going bring the light for Valky. Honestly, I think I'm taking Cobra. Because if they don't have a creature in play, then like even if they can get the Tibalt somehow, you have to take Valky. Oh, I didn't realize they had a swamp. Mm, I thought this was a different land. <laughs> I did not realize that this was a swamp. That was my bad. I just thought it was a different land. <laughs> That's what they get for playing those lands. They, they tricked me. They got me good. I mean, to be fair, it's impossible to tell what land it is. Like, look at it. Could you tell me with a like with a shadow of a doubt that that was actually a swamp? No, you couldn't. All right, it looks like a fucking island. Yes, you're just lying to me. You're a hundred percent lying to me. I ref I refuse to believe that you believe that. Purple is a swamp color. No, it looks like an island. That's an island. All right. Like, look at the... It's an island, all right? It's an island. Nobody actually knows. Even after they played the land, it says Snow-Covered Swamp on it, but it, it still could be anything. Who knows what color it makes? Like, this one's more obvious, right? Like, I can tell that's a forest. That's a mountain, but, like, what? Okay, that helps a little bit. It does help a little bit. Uh, Jeffrey getting into the red zone. They can't... Hold on. So they can sack Analyst to get these two back. One, two, oh. They can instant speed make Ygra, right? Because they sack this. This makes two mana. This makes three. Oh, no, because it's tapped. Okay, so we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. This puts me to play tapped. So they can't sack the passage. <laughs> three lands in the graveyard. <laughs> God, I missed it again. It doesn't look like a land. It doesn't look like a land. It's not my fault, okay? They don't look like real lands. <laughs> it's not my fault, okay? Look, this is what I would tell my lawyer. I would just tell them that I I didn't know it was a land, all right? I, that's what I would tell the judge. I didn't know it was a land. You can't you can't make me believe that it's a land. What? Did they only have 4 mana? I thought they had more mana. Oh no, cuz they had 3 and then this makes Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Um So Four, five, six. I guess you just go goose. Sack two foods and a goose. 
right? One, two, three. There you go. One, two, three, and then play the land, I guess. It's that land diff. I still have four cards in hand, too. They just don't look like lands, all right? It's not my fault. This Viper card, huh? How how about this Viper card? We have just been cooking people left and right with Viper. All right, you win. Viper, not good enough to beat an Atraxa, but good enough to beat everything else. All right, I've been streaming for eight hours. I think it's time to call it there. Chat, it was fun. Uh, thank you all very, very much for tuning in. Hope you had a wonderful time. Appreciate you all being here, as always. Thank you very, very much for all the subs, the bits, the donos. I can't do any of this without all of your support. So thank you very, very much. Have a wonderful evening. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye.